What's the matter with you? You can't take an ass beating bitch! Shut up! Do something! You're smart, right? Do that, do that thing! You! Come here! Breathe into his mouth! Cuss! Calling the audible. Booyah! Wow! <laughs> this kicks like a mule with his balls wrapped in duct tape! With Pease Delery. Tight, 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 yeah! And George Michael Collector Ass. <laughs> Starts now. Try to clean the manure out from between your ears. <laughs> what did you do that for? Shut up! Welcome everyone, you are listening to and perhaps watching Calling the Audible, the flagship of the FPF podcast programming. Um, you're watching of course on www.theunclemikeshow.com. If you haven't watched it yet, you're the one missing out. We are live at Coast to Coast Studios. I am joined in the studio with GM Collect Your Ass. Uh, GM, where can people follow you? Hi. Hi. Uh, I can be followed at GMKOLE44 on Twitter for underwhelming news. Awesome. G- by, by calling yourself G.O.M. Cole, you sound like actually the worst rapper I had ever listened to. My name is uh, Pease Del Riz. I am at Pease FPF. Uh, I am, we are joined, of course, in studio with our producer, uh, Eagle at Master Control, and his brother, who we call, of course... Upgrade the, MS the, Control. The, the improvement at Master Control. And, of course, a wonderful <laughs> little girl who just uh, walked in to say hi. Um... <laughs> So, that being said, as I get nervous in front of uh, beautiful, attractive females, I, uh, I'm going to try and keep it together. Uh, Mongoose, however, did keep it together as they beat Los Luchadors 28-20. to 20. Yeah, it's, it seems like Edward Shoshan tends to struggle against the Mongoose core, I don't think, throughout their history of having played each other head-to-head throughout the years. I don't think that Shoshan has ever come uh, ahead over Mongoose. Given that... I play for a team that has struggled with him in the past, so I sympathize 100%. Mm-hmm. I, I know that's that's difficult. But it ha- if this season for Los Luchadores, offensively just hasn't seemed to be working out. What do you think the main problem has been? Uh, because I agree that, yes, they've struggled in the past against uh, the Mongoose, but what, what's it been the last few weeks for them? I think, honestly, it just comes down to the fact that there's too many cooks in the kitchen for this team. Um, you have players, you have a ton of... Number one receivers on this team right now. You have Rosh Ben Applicator, Chris Rosen, and Vince Nardone. And I think the fact that the offense isn't centralized around one person with everyone else following tends to suffer from that. Whereas there's times where Vince Nardone really takes the lead and pushes forward this team. Other times where it's in it's actually Roshdi who takes the lead as he should as the professor of FPF and having that experience, there's no one who's really stepped forward and stepped up on this team. They're all just waiting for everyone else to do their thing. Los Luchadores were closer in contention uh, leading into this week. Now they fall to 11. Have they officially fallen? I mean, I mean, it's not official. They still have a shot, but in your mind, are they officially I, don't, I, th- I think it's, it's unlikely that they'll make it in. Um, considering how close it is right now with that playoff run, they're going to need a lot of help to make yeah, it. Yeah, and there's even a chance that they win the division, but it's highly, It's, it's highly, very outlandish, highly and it, it all comes down to the matchup against BD Bandits as well. Mm. But you and I both know that BD Bandits' defense is more highly touted than their offense. And with that in mind, an offense that's struggling like Los Luchadores isn't, isn't going to do well. That's fair. That's fair. Uh, Mongoose have grabbed the reins of Conference B Central. Given that they lost the head-to-head with the regiment, do you think they can hold on to it? Yeah, without a doubt. Um, the, like Los Luchadores, they will need a little bit of help. But I think this of the two is a little bit more likely, considering the ups and downs we've been seeing from the regiment as well. Fair. Um... Two teams that have been on the up for most of the season, uh, Bearskins, Sea Assassins. Uh, we saw that in the game of the week where Bearskins took took the win, 26-13. Um, I was there for this game. What I saw was... You can see me in the video. We can see You can see us in the video. That's true. You were there as well. That's true. That's true. Uh, Neil Edinson, of course, uh, won the game despite having thrown three interceptions. Do you think that if... Lazaro was there. You think this game is even close, given that he turned the ball over them? Even closer? Yeah, I absolutely do. I think that what do we take away from this game? It was a fun game to watch on Game of the Mm -hmm. Week, but has no real implications because the matchup between the two can essentially be discounted by the fact that C Assassins were missing the flagship player of this team. Well, to be honest, I was going a different way. I I see this as, I think the game would have gone completely the opposite way. I think just the wheels would have fallen off the carriage because... 
They started the game with two consecutive interceptions. Uh, the three and outs as well. In a couple, yeah, exactly. Like if your offense is struggling against the Sea Assassins, you don't stand a chance. You're gonna get at most one possession where they don't score. You you essentially need to go punch for punch with them and hope that you come up with an interception or play the possession game where you or have last the last yep. the ball at the end. Absolutely, absolutely. That is the script. That's what teams that have, that have succeeded against them. That's that's what they do. Um, the Bearskins. Oh, I personally think having seen the game live, they take too many chances. To, to get it done as we move on to the playoffs, as they face a better competition in closer games. Do you think that taking all these unnecessary shots is going to help? Or do you think that the receiving squad is good enough to be able to uh, steal a play here and there to keep them, keep them around long enough to, to make a run to the championship? For the regular season, absolutely it's going to be enough. As playoff time comes... It's going to be more difficult. You're going to see nails are starting to get bitten a little bit more. More will rest on the shoulders of Neil Edinson and less on the shoulders of the rest of his team. You and I both remarked as well that there's times where there were key drives where either Alexander Papich was on, on the sidelines, Marco Bertoldi or Jacob Peterson. Essentially, there's going to be a time where you're going to need the top flight receivers and defenders playing both ways. And, and I'm all for rotating and having a bigger roster and getting the guys reps. But at the end of the day, and especially when the game is on the line, it's going to be on Neil to call out his horses and really make sure that he has the right guys in place in order to score. Given that Moose lo- lost Lasso's yesterday and did not clinch the top seed in the conference, do you think that Sea Assassins can now move up and claim that, that spot? It will all come down to this last this last week. It it does certainly help that Daniel Lazaro will be back into the the mix. But looking at how close the playoff race is, especially in that conference, um, there there's a lot of room for not only error but speculation as well. As we wait for Eagle to bring it up on the screen, we have actually we have uh, the Moose? Sea Assassins yeah. are going to be playing. Uh, against Brocasian, who were without Christian Serentola, yep. as we've been talking about for two weeks now, and Musra up against Les Uzist. Who are also without their... Well, their Hugh people. Henderson was back last week. Okay. Just so, in time to play Moose. Just awesome. in time to play Moose, exactly. <laughs> I, I think at the end of the day, though, the... Um, oh, I don't even want to say this. The knowledge and savoir-faire of Moose are going to take over and probably clinch against the more talented Les Uzist, but who struggle, who str- who struggle mentally and really just adapting to the flag game. They they're successful season after season, but there's a lot of room for improvement. And I think that Moose is just going to play the head game with them and win. Fair, and it's funny because I I did sort of sneer at that, despite the fact that I always say they're the most talented team in Division Three. So Lizards, just speaking of them, they did win thirty three to twenty over Brocasian uh, with. Uh, we see basically you know. everyone named Dau uh, playing a little bit of quarterback in this one. Uh, the bulk of it, of course, going to Devin Dau, uh, who struggled throwing two touchdowns, two interceptions. Um, can Brocasian earn a playoff spot with Sharon Toler Hurt? They went from leading the division to now fighting to get back in. So because they're still fighting to get back in, Anything is possible. It's just going to be very, very difficult. Because not only do you have to come up with these wins, you have to build chemistry and and hope that it'll last you throughout the postseason. It all depends on who's eligible as well. Just seeing uh, Brocasian's eligibility will come into play as well. Are they going to be playing with six? Are they going to be playing with seven? Who can play both ways? Will this will this tire against teams that have eight, nine, ten guys as well? It, it, they're very, I think that if Brocasian make it in, it's all going to come down to the matchup. Whoever finishes in the one seed or the two seed, who they'll be playing. All right. Uh, Lazers just looked apart. As I mentioned, Hugo Henderson returned a quarterback. Terrible Is this return. a long-lasting formula or just uh, merely a single-week rejuvenation? I don't think it's even that. I think Lazers just got lucky to um, have that opportunity considering uh, Hugo Henderson went one for four. Thankfully, they have athletes. On That's the actually not accurate. I was at the game. Uh, Hugo Henderson threw four touchdowns, one interception. One interception. <laughs> Interesting. So uh, yeah, that, that that was probably Brett Calendar taking stats, of course. Uh, oh, that's that's why he's not here either. Why is that? Because he's he can't take stats. Probably Doesn't can't take. Well. Probably can't follow his schedules. See where he's gonna be. Makes sense. Makes sense. Um, Look at our, this, Eagle. For, for those of you who can't see, which is everyone who's listening or watching, Eagle is actually going into the back end of the site right now and is actually fixing it. 
So if you want to know why stats are wrong, it's always Eagles' fault. But they won't be wrong for those who aren't listening live and are wondering when they check the stats. Fair, say. fair. Uh, one last question before we cut to break. Les exist. are their jerseys the exact same color as Southwest Sauce? <laughs> no, they're not. They're the exact same I'm color. I'm colorblind. I actually need your help on this one. They're the exact same color as the highlighter. It's sort of that orangey-pink. Which, orangey pink. Yeah, there's there's no real name for it, but the be- the best thing about that is that they don't have to ever worry about wearing pennies because a no one's gonna match that jersey color and b the pennies are the same colors anyways. Fair, fair. Um, so as promised, we're gonna cut to break real quick. When we come back, we're gonna talk about playoff fi- the the playoff picture, and in fact, I expect to learn some more colors as I generally see life in grayscale anyway. has been brought to you by the English Montreal School Board's DEAL program. Distance education for all learners will allow you to obtain your high school diploma or prerequisites for SAGEP or vocational studies from the comfort of your own home. It's never too late to go back to school. Learn anywhere at your own pace and get your diploma. Call 514-788-5937 for information or visit www.distanced.ca for more details. Welcome everyone, I am Pease Delariz, you are GM Calethris, I can be followed at PeaseFPF, you can be followed on Twitter at GMCole44, uh, for those of you watching, you are following us live at www.theunclemikeshow.com, remember the Uncle Mike Show is on later at 9pm where he will have guests, guests. Uh, we are in the Coast to Coast Studios, um, I am uh, joined of course, or we are joined of course with a couple of guests, the most important and most overrated of course Mohan. is... Actually, yes. You Actually, you yes. See, you got a tweet from Toronto FC. Is that the official Toronto FC uh, Twitter handle? Thanks, Mokan, for yes. interfering with my show. Thank you. Um, <laughs> you've proven once again that you take away from content rather than adding to it. Um, we have <laughs> the Eagle MS to control. If you want to tweet the show live, you can tweet us at Eagle FPF. <laughs> like Brett Calendar has, he says, at Eagle FPF, after a massive W versus Moose, can Lasso's ride that momentum and sneak into the play? He, he went in the playoffs, not into. Um, also, who's the scariest pot? Potential. It, oh, well, potential. I had to reread that three times wow. to figure it eight out. Wow, eight seed at, in A and B. Brett Calder, take an English class, please. Uh, let's start with this first question, um, which is obviously because he's salty because he got cut from Moose. But um, can can um, Lasso's? Can the Souls get back into the playoffs? Well, it does also have to do, we were just mentioning it before we touched on it a little bit. We'll touch on it a little more because we will be talking about the playoffs. But it does come down to that Brocasian game as well. How they do is very contingent on Lesos and their playoff eligibility as well. They play Zio Frate, which is a very favorable matchup for them. Um, Especially with, in my opinion, Francois Remo having him back. I, I, I know all the... Uh, I know Ben Leji has been very successful in the past, but Lasso's is just better when Francois Raymond is there. Um, so, potentially right now, um, to answer that question, so I've already answered half of it, and right now the potential eight seeds in Conference A are either Snatchers or OTF, and in Conference B... That being said, Snatchers play Bearskins, OTF play Wild Boys. I don't see this changing. Correct, I, I agree, but he said potential eight seed. Who is the best potential eight seed? And then on the other side of the ball, you have um, Prestige Worldwide, De Regiment, Les Udzist, Brocasian, and Lassos as the potential eight seeds. I think from, from a dangerous point of view, Prestige Worldwide would be the nightmare eight seed of all of them, with Lassos coming in second. 
I don't know, having faced Les this this past week, having Trudell back, having Ramo back, having Leger as a safety, as a as a potential quarterback. As a as a potential quarterback, as a very talented receiver as well. He's, I have a, he's say, a D one player who hasn't gotten enough press even in D one. Absolutely. And and you know what? Honestly, like And for those of you who plays out, play outdoors, he plays on Phantom. There we go. There we go. The, honestly, it's they they continuously challenged us on every play. And, and they took away the things that we do well, and we had to find ways to, to stay in the game. Uh, it was the most we'd been challenged this season at all. And I've said in the past, I said in the past when Lasos was in Div Four, they were the best div- defense I had seen up to up to and including Division Three. I think when this full roster is complete, they're the scariest eight seed if they can sneak up in there. Uh, I Even more so than Prestige Worldwide. More so than Prestige World because they're not playing any defense this season. Uh, but the offense carries the team enough as is. I don't think it's enough. Not this season. Not with all the quarterbacks in Division C. I, I, I honestly, to me, I, I would say that so. If I had to choose a second team, I wouldn't. Uh, yes. uh, maybe, maybe no, because even VPC is limited with and with, VPC with can't uh, logistically can't finish in an eight. Yeah, uh, Bengals have looked good now that the unholders playing quarterback, but he won't be there for the playoffs even if they do steal the eighth spot. Um, I don't know. Uh, honestly, I'm going to go ahead and, and say for me it's Lesos. Uh, maybe it's because I just lost them so, and I was just really impressed in that game. But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go ahead and say Lesos. So if you look at the standings on your screen right now, uh, in Conference A, Bearskins are in first, Wild Boys in second, Predators in third. Those are the conference winners who have also locked in the conference. With Buddies, Packstar Prime, BD Bandits, Monstars, and Snatchers currently in the 1 through 8. With OTF challenging the Snatchers at 9, mm-hmm. which is still up for debate. But and that being said, I don't, I don't see yeah, it changing. Yeah, and, and I agree with you as well. And if you'll take over for Conference B. I was just going to do that, GM. It's like you read my mind. Um, Conference B, we have Moose at the 1 seat still holding on, thankfully. Uh, Meta Mayhem uh, right behind them. Uh, then we have Mongoose... Uh, at the three spot, Sea Assassins at the uh, fourth spot, then VPC, Prestige Worldwide, the Regiment at seven, Les Uzist at eight. Now the teams are still alive. In order from nine to 13 are Brocasian, Lassos, Los Luchadors, Bengals, and still Cray. I have a question a with the rankings lot actually. Of help. Eagle, how is Moose ahead of Meta Man? They have three wins divisionally and less points allowed, and the same amount of points. And because Simon Dagenet did this. So actually, Meta Mayhem is the one seed right now, and Moose is at two. Did you play Meta Mayhem? We did not play Meta Mayhem. Then Simon Dagenet is terrible. Simon Dagenet, fired. At fired FPF. Um, Essentially, it will come down to that Week 10 matchup right now. Yeah. Because of the fact that they're both at the same number of wins. If Moose come out with a win in this one, they will supersede Meta Mayhem. Providing Unless Meta Mayhem wins, because Meta Mayhem right now is the one seed. Yes. Despite what our chart says, sorry to the folks watching live. Um, <laughs> so control C, control V. <laughs> what like it's it's an absolute disaster. Here. So like Bengals still crazy. They're gonna need some help, but and so will Los Luchadors for that matter. But uh, the, the the big the big mess for me is Prestige Worldwide, the Regiment Lizards, Brocation Lassos. How do you think this plays out? It's it's really a headache, and we have to touch. On each one of these one by one because they're all at four points right now so uh, looking at who each team plays start <laughs> Eagle obviously um, is a little bit frustrated because he was taking the time to fix this for us and unfortunately we're, we're having to do what we do yeah no no which is totally fine and, yeah. and I get that for sure so looking at the, the potential games right now, Mongoose play Bengals. That's going to be a very difficult in for them. BD Bandits play Lots of Luchadores, as we touched upon before. Um, VPC play still CRA. So still CRA have to win this for yeah. that, a lot of Do you even have a chance? I don't think that that's going to be the case. So VPC will still finish around 5th or 6th. I don't even think they'll finish 7th or 8th. Um, the other potential teams, Prestige mm-hmm. Worldwide against Rude Boys, they will likely get that win and springboard. And Rude Boys uh, forfeit last week. Uh, which had a huge impact on the on the conference race as Men of Mayhem were afforded a thirty to nothing win. So obviously the points against Colin that really does help. And we mentioned as well that um, Los Luchadores plays Zio Frate, which will probably be a favorable win for them. Mm-hmm. So they're just going to need some hope as well in there. All right. Um, so 
what we'll do then is now that you've broken down the situation, we'll make some predictions yeah. on the coming games so that we those following at home will know what what you think is likely to happen. I have an article coming out. Oh, and Brocation plays Sea Assassins, which is not a favorable matchup for them. There we go. I have an article coming out Friday uh, or uh, Saturday, depending when I can get it out, uh, where I will have my predictions. So I'll let you make your predictions. I will, of course, predict the solid game because that's what we do. Um, well, let's start off. We have, of course, past our prime uh, versus Solid. So I guess I'm starting. Um, I Solid's just been struggling a lot. I I like Anton Sakis a lot. No defense. Um, and and that's what I was gonna say is. If there's a game that I can see uh, them getting uh, uh, procedural like getting upset, it's it's uh, in a game where they have a skilled quarterback on the other side and a lot of. And by receivers. procedural divide, you mean past our prime? Oh sorry, oh I'm, I misread that. I'm sorry, past our prime. That changes everything that I just was. I just we said. have a live tweet in from Brent Calendar, which I'd like to have read out loud, please. <laughs> I only saw the caption, but I know. He says, at Eagle FPF, great show thus far, guys, though P's could use a tan. GM, I respect your opinion. Which division... I didn't know you could have emojis in a tweet. Holes? I guess, yeah. Uh, which division leading team has the most holes? I do need time, by the way. I'm going to will, vacation soon. I'm going to assume that it's a figurative and not a literal, uh, which division leading team has the most holes. So if we bring up the playoff picture right now... I think now, we're all roughly the same amount of holes. Like, so, do- doctor, yeah, yes, no? I, I think... Nice. Plus minus um, two holes. That's no disrespect, but I, I mentioned it before, and he knows it as well. It, it's it, the team will rise and fall around him. The team that has the most holes right now is the Bearskins because it's the only team that's being led by their receivers and the defense right now. With Neil Ettenson, who's moved up as a as a QB, he's moved up from Division D from Division Four. Um, this is the one. This is the one team I think where. The QB will really be the rise and fall of this team compared to the others where they're very quarterback-centric teams with the receivers do it, fitting into that system as well. Meta Mayhem is pretty much led by Alex Holowak. Moose is definitely led by Fred Morris. Which is the receivers? Um, the closest team aside from that would be Mongoose in the division leaders, and even then I don't think so. And then Predators and Wild Boys, Matsu Rene is definitely the uh, the head and shoulders of Wild Boys, and Predators are a very, very talented team with very few holes, so I, I would not I would give it to Bearskins in this case. Fair, fair. Um, so, I will go back and, and restate my claim with, with Solid Pass the Prime. I, that being said, now that it's not Prestige Rule 1, I think it'll, it'll, it'll not work out great for Solid. Although, early in the season, when I did my, my mid-season breakdown, I thought Solid would win this game. I just saw the season breaking down differently for you guys. Um, I think Anton will struggle against a very experienced defense. Uh, I think Pastor Prime wins this one over Solid. Uh, I better remember to pick that way when I write my article. OTF Wild It will Wars. be the... Um, however, you have the St. Patrick's Day Parade. Craig O'Brien will be coming from the parade. Paula Pierre will be coming from the parade, guaranteed so drunk. It's, it's the same stage for Paula Pierre as every other game. Uh, <laughs> correct. Oh, fair. Fair. Next so, up on the docket, OTF, OTF Wild, Wild Boys. Boys. Um, Wild Boys are just a freight train right now. I think that this game has a lot of potential to get out of hand. So, uh, aside from everything else, I think we need to remind everyone that it is Week 10. Playoffs do have implications, even if you're out of the playoffs. Um... What happens will carry on to next season or next year. So, especially with so much conflict happening this season, this game really needs to be kept under wraps. That being said, I think Wild Boys will handle uh, handle OTF. Los Luchadores versus the Bandits. I, I alluded to it earlier that the... Um, and you mentioned it as well, that the Los Luchadores offense is struggling. I think against the defense and a team like BD Bandits, you can't side against them in this case. So, I have BD Bandits in this. Fair. Um, Mongoose, Bengals, Bengals did sport Leon Holder as quarterback. May or may not be there this week. It's it's tough to make predictions this kind of game. That being said, I'm putting in that situation where you got to make that pick. What do you say? In all honesty, regardless of Le- if Leon Holder is there or not, so I will even go as far as saying if he's there, they will still lose against Mongoose. Fair. I think Mongoose are very solid defensively. They're going to slow down the pace of the game. Leon Holder... And they do. Main, Mongoose slow the game. They down slow down the game crawl. effectively well yeah. because they can still score. And I think that Leon Holder is going to get frustrated and flustered against this kind of defense. Uh, Genie 3D against the Brotherhood. 
it all depends right now on who the better head, brotherhood have quarterbacking. It is my understanding from inside sources that going into the playoffs, Jamal Gittens will be quarterbacking the Brotherhood. However, they're relaxing for the time being and just getting the wins beforehand. So even with that being said, I think Janie uh, 3D are so up and down right now, you, I wouldn't pick them. So I will go with the Brotherhood on this one. See Assassin's Brocation. This This is just... A relentless offense, as the Assassins have. Daniel Lazaro will be back after his game suspension and really looking to be making making a point in springboard into the playoffs. As as much as I like the Brocasian core and what they bring to the table, it's just not going to be enough right now considering they're without their quarterback and have to have someone fill in and go score for score with one of the leading passers in Division Three. Fair. Uh, the Men of Mayhem versus Predators. This one really, really interests me right, right? now. Um, I like seeing the matchup of Terrence Adams against James Floriani because it's it's still not established where where James Floriani will be 100% healthy or not if he can buy time with his feet. But if he can't, um, Terrence Adams is going to be coming in like a bat out of hell. He has the capability of knocking down those passes for getting those sacks. So that is an interesting matchup to see. I see this one being the closest of all the games we've covered so far, but even with that being said, I still think that right now Predators have the edge because of the depth of the roster. All right, fair. Um, still Cray, BPC. Still CRA are, are too green a team right now to take on a team that's so chemistry placed like VPC, who are doing really well, who are in the playoffs right now, and still CRA fighting for that last playoff spot. I don't think that Still Cray have seen a quarterback like Robbie Robinson and what he brings to the table, especially with the core of VPC. VPC in this one. Moose Lizard Zist. Tough one. Yeah, I know. Um, <laughs> I'm going to go with Moose on this one. Moose on top. Moose on top. I hope so. Rude Boys, Prestige Roll Line. This it is going to be a very interesting be a one forfeit. considering it, it'll probably be a forfeit. If this was earlier on in the season, it would have been more interesting, but Prestige Worldwide one way or the other. Snatchers, Bearskins. Um, Bearskins are going to win this one, but it doesn't matter anyways because Snatchers will still make it into the playoffs. Simo will probably attempt to make it a close game. However, the, the Bearskins Unless defense really is very, Unless he really wants to play Bearskins in the first round, in which case he'll be throwing with his left hand and so on and so forth. Or just playing like himself. Uh... We have Le Bleu Branlar against the Regiment. Uh, the Regiment are just too strong for Le Bleu Branlar. I respect how they've been able to turn their season around. However, that being said, Doug McKern is going to exploit the defense here. Texas Bearmans against Le Bode. I'm very happy that Texas Bearmans have been doing so strongly, uh, especially in their Agreed. first division, uh, first season in Division Three. But Le Bode's have a top tier quarterback, a top tier Division Two quarterback. And a scary, scary defense that disguises their coverage, plays physical, and is quick to the ball. There's there's not much room for error here. Fair. Monstars and KGP champs. Um, just seeing firsthand how strong Monstars are, deceptively strong. Um, they go score for score. They're, they're great on defense. And I think that Phil Cutler is going to get flustered against them. Lasos, zero flat day. We talked uh, about Lassos. this earlier. Lasos. Uh, final thoughts, Brent. I'm I'm very happy that Brent respects me as much as he does. So the fact that he's tweeted in is it's because you're a nicer person than me. <laughs> if you're if you're honest to Brent, he'd hate you. Well, I'm I'm a nicer person apparently in the lower divisions. So fair, that, fair, that's, that's true. That's fine. The, the more you move down, the more uh, people like you. Um, I'm gonna go for one this week. I'm just gonna say Bobby Mickelberg's offer of a Spanish chicken soup sounds delicious. I've been craving it ever since I read it on the Facebook wall. Dude, I hate you a little bit because I don't know where I'm gonna find it or what, what Spanish chicken soup is. Um, anyway, thanks a lot, dude. I don't know where to find it. I hate you. Um, GM, thank you for everything you've done today. Uh, thank you for your contributions. Thank you, Mokan, It's not for quite Spanish, show. but if you want some like Portuguese pita pita chicken, I'd be down for that too. Romanos? Could... Yeah. All right. Uh, as for the improvement at Master Control, thank you for joining us. Eagle, thanks for whatever. Uh, of course, thanks for what, tuning in at www.theunclemikeshow.com, uh, at the Coast to Coast Studios. Uh, the Nation of Domination Show, is that the one that's next? It Nation is. Nation of Domination is up next. Uh, thank you everyone for tuning in, and thank you, of course, for letting me be myself. <laughs> <laughs>